Welcome to the Webster World Report, a special program linking Webster University's global operations during the pandemic crisis. And now, here's our host, Rick Rockwell. Welcome to another special program linking Webster University's worldwide system during the pandemic crisis. This week, we'll travel to Athens and hear from Webster's campus in Greece. Also, a member of Webster's Board of Trustees shares about important new initiatives. And we'll conclude our conversation about how folks at Webster's location in San Antonio are coping. But first, let's hear from newscaster Tierra Gray. The semester may almost be over, but there's still time for students to compete in the annual May Gallery Juried Photo Competition. It's open to all students worldwide. Bill Barrett is a faculty member in the School of Communications and director of the May Gallery. There's no reason that students in Tashkent or in Athens or in Accra couldn't submit, but those are three places that we've never had work come in from before, so I'm hopeful. Those selected in this juried competition will have their photos displayed on the May Gallery's website. The deadline to enter is Saturday, May 9th. Details about the competition can be found in Webster Today and in the university website's newsroom. Webster University's operations in Uzbekistan successfully hosted an international and virtual celebration of World Book Day last week. Here's one of the faculty organizers discussing the celebration and reading one of the entries. Greetings from Tashkent, Uzbekistan, where we have initiated virtual celebration of the World Book Day. I'm Gordana Fashakovic, professor of economics at Webster University in Tashkent. What is so special is that we have participants of all ages. Our youngest is five years old and two are 91 year young. I would like to open our first virtual celebration of World's Book Day at Webster University with Dosite Obradovic, the great Serbian educator. Books are precious since one who reads can illuminate the mind and reach the heart. More than 70 people submitted their videos for the celebration, including entries from all across the globe. All of the videos are posted on Webster University Tashkent's YouTube page. Webster's Information Technology Department is warning that online scammers have increased their activity due to the global move to work at home operations. The IT department reports that it has seen more phishing and email scams this week. Everyone should be on the lookout for suspicious emails or offers. Some of those messages masquerade as coming from real departments and real email addresses inside Webster's system. Please do not interact or reply to those messages. If you spot a suspicious message, please contact the IT service desk to report a problem. The university announced four winners of the William T. Kemper Award for Excellence in Teaching this week. The winners are David Dixon, who is an adjunct professor of mathematics in the Walker School of Business and Technology. Thomas Surface, an adjunct professor in the School of Communications who has also served as an advisor to the forensics and debate team for the past 19 years. Sheila Huang, chair of the Department of English in the College of Arts and Sciences. And Gad Guterman of the Lee Jardine College of Fine Arts, Guterman, by the way, is also the new chair of the Conservatory of Theater Arts. The Kemper Award is the highest teaching honor bestowed on faculty members at Webster University. Congratulations to all of the winners for their dedication, determination, and achievements. For the Webster World Report, I'm Tierra Gray. Thanks, Tierra. This week, our shout-out has a little bit of competition to it. In the past week, our listeners in Austria have now dethroned Uzbekistan as the one place outside the U.S. with the most listeners for this report. Webster has operated a campus in Vienna, Austria since 1981, so thanks to all who are listening in Austria, Uzbekistan, and elsewhere around the globe. And now we return to the United States, San Antonio to be specific. Last week we opened a conversation with Ruben Molina, the director of Webster's location at Randolph Air Force Base. He joined us via Cisco WebEx from San Antonio. During the second part of our interview, he emphasized that supporting students in the pandemic is just the latest chapter of Webster's long history in San Antonio and Texas. 
Well, you know, the relationships, I guess, Rick, would begin um, over 35 years ago or thereabouts. That's how long Webster has been a, a part of the military community here. Uh, we started with one campus at Fort Sam. Um, we grew eventually to four campuses and then a metro, five distinct locations. We subsequently, through no fault of our own, uh, found ourselves in the middle of a base closure uh, action and Brook City Base closed. And we had such a well-grounded reputation here that uh, leadership went down and visited the education service officer at Randolph Air Force Base, where we had no campus presence, and said, you know, because of the closure of Brook City Base, we'd like to uh, we'd like to start offering programs on Randolph. And they immediately said yes. And they said, you know, this coincides with the departure of the University of Texas at San Antonio, who can't seem to get faculty willing to come on base, either because of their credentials or some other uh, issue, Rick, that was always a problem. So they exited, we came in, and we've been prospering at that location for years because it is home to the Air Force Personnel Center. It is home to the Headquarters Air Education and Training Command. These are perfectly aligned missions with um, many, many uh, uh, active duty and, and civilians and contractors doing the very kind of work that our programs tend to support. And so we have been a, uh, a strong part of that location um, all these years as well. I'm not saying that we haven't had um, serious competitive forces out there. We all have. And in our case, these serious competitive forces have kind of come from nowhere and uh, added a element of a real challenge uh, to how we market our programs, how we uh, uh, price our programs, and how we carry out our activities. That's why I think this push towards online and the push towards WebNet Plus, this whole streaming component has really uh, um, in it almost taken us full circle, Rick. 35 years ago, I remember submitting grades on a answer on a, on a pencil in bubble sheet answer um, a document that had to be faxed and sent to main campus and manually entered. I remember a time when course syllabi were pretty well constructed in the same, the same way. You were on your own, working from scratch in a very highly uh, inefficient way. And my God, look what we've grown to become. And at the same time, we were introducing all of these auto automated uh, uh, techniques. So was so was DOD, and so was the Air Force. And you know, Rick, they were consolidating. They were moving towards centers of excellence. They were moving to concentrate functions in one location, much the same way we have. And so we find ourselves in kind of a very complementary path with them over the years. And the trick now, I think, is to align uh, our programs to their mission today and where their mission seems to be going uh, in the future. And I think we've done a very, very good job of that. Any message to the General Webster system that you would like to send from San Antonio? Continue your great support. Um, continue looking forward, even though those of us in the field may not recognize that you're looking forward. We can, in hindsight now, look back and say, wow, I'm glad we did what we did when we did it. So I would say thank you. I would say thank you on behalf of the staff, on behalf of our students, on behalf of our faculty, and Rick, on behalf of our partners. Thank you so much, Dr. Ruben Molina, the director of Webster's location at Randolph Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas. Our guest today on the Webster World Report. Thank you again, Ruben. Rick, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be with you. Coming up, insights from one of Webster's trustees, and we'll have our virtual trip to Greece. More from the Webster World Report in a moment. 
Webster University is recognized as a global leader in undergraduate and graduate education. As a pioneer in online learning since 1999, Webster was well positioned to quickly convert all offerings to online formats during the current COVID-19 crisis. Our priority is to guide our students to the successful completion of their educational journey, and online is a great vehicle to do so. At Webster, online is not just one format. There are a variety of platforms faculty can use to flexibly reach students, depending on the needs of the course. To learn how Webster can ensure you a high quality learning experience, visit webster.edu forward slash OLC. Become the most effective manager, leader, and entrepreneur you can be with a Walker MBA from Webster University. Rebuilt from the ground up, this MBA leverages the concept of value creation. Designed for the part-time working student, pick the online or web-enhanced hybrid option. A new MBA, the way you need it. Webster's Walker MBA. Master your future. For more information or to apply, webster.edu slash MBA. Welcome back to the Webster World Report. Laura Herring is one of Webster's trustees, not only a member of the board, but also a member of the board's executive committee and a chair of the advancement committee. She joined us via Cisco WebEx from St. Louis to discuss her views of how the university is handling the crisis and how the university will be supporting frontline responders like nurses and others. We feel helpless in this coronavirus situation. We want to help, but that's not our skill set. And yet I see the Webster University nursing students going out every day on the front lines, serving our community, helping students, uh, adults, older adults, testing them for the coronavirus, caring for them in the um, hospitals that they're working at. and we just decided to approach Beth and say, how can we help? And so it was determined that we would start a frontline responder fund so that these nurses who can't complete their clinicals during this time of year and who have to do them during the summer now, it means they're not going to be able to earn additional monies for perhaps returning to Webster. You mentioned um, Chancellor Beth Strobel. Um, Tell us a little bit about her teamwork with you in establishing this fund. Being that I'm on the executive committee and head of advancement for the university uh, on the board, Beth and I meet frequently. And we always have the best discussions about what if, what could we do? And it was through talking with Beth and her passion for making a difference with these nursing students so that they don't feel pressured to drop out or hold back a year due to their lack of funds. She and I brainstormed this fund together and we were so excited when we came up with it because I know a lot of people around the world want to do something for nurses and scientists. And what I would say is a lot of my friends are saying, Laura, what can we do? So, of course, uh, now that we have this first uh, responder, well, first line fund, I really want to be able to get back to each one of them and say, hey, here's something you can do to make a difference in a nurse's life or a scientist's life who will eventually find our cure for a vaccine. Tell us a little bit more about the details of the fund. Um, it's it's starting up this week, isn't it? Yes, it's starting May 7th as part of St. Louis's um, Give and Donate to Your Favorite Nonprofit. And so, uh, as I understand it, you're making a wonderful website for Webster where people could go online and donate. They can adopt a nurse for $500 or they can give whatever they can afford. We're not saying that you have to give $500. We want people to give from their hearts, whatever they can afford in order to get that fund up to $150,000. My husband and I feel strongly about supporting the nurses and the young scientists that Webster is producing. And so we're going to adopt 10 uh, frontline responders. You mentioned they're um, 
Give STL Day, which is coming up uh, soon in a few days after this podcast. But we will remind folks that they can go online and find out more information about this Frontline Responders Fund um, if they are moved um, to help support our nurses and others um, who are, are working on the front lines right now. Uh, just a, a little bit of a, of a change. I'm, I'm curious about how you think Webster is doing overall as we confront this pandemic crisis. You know, I was with Beth a day before they shut down everything practically. And that very next day, Webster moved into action. I am so impressed with how Webster has pulled everything together so quickly to take action to protect their students, their staff, and their faculty. And they have, I think, created a miracle with how they got students out of the dorms, back home, those international students who were on our site at Webster Groves, they have housed them to protect them from not having to travel and go back to their countries. It is amazing what has been accomplished each day in making sure that Webster staff, faculty are totally safe. And one of the things I'll mention, Rick, we were probably one of the first universities in the world to have online courses. And so as a result, we are light years ahead of other universities who are just now for the first time struggling with trying to put online courses effectively into their curriculum. Yes, it's absolutely true that that Webster was one of the pioneers in this area in the 1990s. Laura, I, I wonder if you have any messages for the overall Webster system, the global system, anything that you would like to say, uh, because we're all in this together. As an alum, I want to say how proud of Webster University I am of their quick action, their caring for their staff, for students, uh, professors, and for the quality that they have been able to maintain in their teaching. That is so unusual to find in universities today where faculties jump to make a difference in students' lives quickly online. So I am very, very proud to be an alum of Webster, but also I'm very proud to serve on the board of Webster because the call to action has just been wonderful and immediate. The other thing I would say, I want to speak to everyone listening to this podcast to express their gratitude to these frontline workers, these nurses, these scientists who are working on our behalf to prevent people from dying from coronavirus. So if you feel, as I do, so grateful that we have a nursing program who prepared their students for situations like this, please donate to the Frontline Responder Fund at Webster University. And like you said, Rick, they could go online to do it at websteruniversity.edu, or they could write a check to Webster University, attention, Frontline Responder Fund. Anything else that you would like to add? The nurses and nursing students who we have at Webster have had to juggle work, life, children at home, teaching their children at home. They've had to make car payments just like you and me. They've done it under great duress. And that's why we want to lift these frontline responders up and say thank you. So let's give them an opportunity to come back next year to Webster and continue their classes. Well, we say thank you to you, Laura Herring, for being our guest today on the Webster World Report. Laura Herring, a trustee at Webster University, joining us via Cisco WebEx 
from St. Louis, Missouri. Thanks for being our guest today. Thanks for inviting me. And now our visit to Greece. Dr. Susanna Michaelidis is Vice Rector of Webster University, Athens. She joined us via Skype from Athens. We were one of the first uh, who immediately uh, changed to these uh, online courses. And somehow it was the first day of the start of the second uh, spring uh, term. And the students somehow as if they were ready, you see. We had a meeting, for instance, for, with the faculty and staff, and immediately in an hour already, uh, well, the classes uh, started. The class was at two o'clock, for instance, and, uh, and uh, well, the professor went, she had the class. Well, and uh, what I can say, you see, uh, the students are very responsible for everything what they are doing. Uh, some students, or sometimes we call them not maybe very good students and who are like to miss some classes, well, their attendance is even better. So tell us, please, how you are doing, how your family is doing, how others there on the faculty and staff are doing. Are you all well? We are all well, thanks God. Uh, well, uh, my family, what? Uh, I'm by myself here at home. Uh, my cousins and my relatives, all of them are at home because we have very, very strict regulations for be very careful with uh, this virus. Uh, and I think the uh, work which the government did was very good. They started uh, taking these measures very early. It was at the beginning of March. So, and on the 10th of March, all the schools were closed. And uh, well, what uh, the scholars say that uh, it was very important. Everything is um, well, well organized. Uh, I'm not leaving uh, my apartment. Uh, I'm just well, sorry, throwing some garbage, nothing else. Uh, I don't have time because I'm teaching. Well, I'm answering the emails and everything. Otherwise, everything is fine. Everything is well, well organized uh, with the supplies. Anything I need, well, everything is uh, brought, brought brought to me from the supermarkets, from uh, various, for instance, uh, uh, take out of food. So, no problem. Tell us a bit about the restrictions. What what type of restrictions have? the Greek government put on citizens there? Uh, what restrictions? First of all, nobody is allowed to walk just in the streets. Well, there are the hours, for instance, the last uh, restriction was that people can walk, for instance, from 10 to uh, 1, 2 o'clock, unless they go, uh, you see, uh, and they have uh, some um, responsibilities uh, for their jobs. But uh, if you need to go to buy something from the supermarkets, you can go, but you have to send uh, uh, SMS to a special office and they are giving you a special piece of paper which gives you the allowance to walk. But you have also to put the time from which time to what time you will be out of your home. Now, for instance, for these days of Easter, the uh, regulations were very strict. Nobody was supposed to leave the place where they live. Only the people, for instance, who are living in the places, let's say, in uh, the northern parts of Greece or in some villages, well, some of them were allowed to go to their uh, homes, uh, to their um, places where they would spend Easter, but nobody was supposed to celebrate Easter in the way as Greeks always celebrate it when they have big um, gatherings and everything. But it was fine. For instance, uh, here, uh, my uh, neighbors and I, we went, you know how the roofs are in Greece. Well, you can have parties there. So we went there, we had the barbecue, and then we sat, we ate together. Well. Chat, chat for a while and everything, nothing else. And all over the, uh, the place, uh, well, around me, 
Well, everybody was either while making the barbecues uh, at home in the oven, or they would be on the balconies or on the roofs. Or somebody who has the um, yard, they would have it in the yard. So a party, yeah. but still social distancing at the party? Social distances, yes. Well, they showed even on the TV that, you know, three neighbors, they were one next to the other in their yard, and how they would be socializing uh, while through the fences. Um, apparently, you see, Greek character is a little bit different. Nobody would uh, expect that the Greeks would be so, so obedient to all the rules. But on the other hand, it was very, very good. At least for this situation. We're, we're hearing that there might be some loosening of restrictions in parts of Europe. Is there any discussion of that yet? Yes, based on the results also after Easter. And uh, mainly they would be losing these restrictions starting May the 4th. Uh, why? But not for everybody immediately. Uh, eventually, you see, they would start with uh, some businesses, then will add something else and this, uh, and would allow to leave the houses. Uh, and the last one will be the people who are in a certain age. Anything else that you'd like to add? What uh, uh, it's for sure that uh, the world is changing. The world will be different. It's difficult to predict what to expect exactly. But maybe it was necessary. Well, it's a pity that so many people uh, passed away. But uh, on the other hand, maybe it was necessary uh, to change certain things. And maybe it's uh, necessary for all, us, for all of us to think what is very important in our life. What is the meaning of life? What is the quality of life? And also maybe to remember the uh, wise uh, people from the past. Uh, well, uh, maybe the earth, uh, our world was uh, tired of everything. For instance, uh, well, uh, you know, I, we are in the seismic zone, yes. And uh, well, uh, they said that uh, seismicity here is lower than it was before that what they say, that they can hear the noise of, of the um, underground, you see. Well, I don't know how to interpret this, but uh, that uh, it's much easier for them to make a research. So who knows? Then in uh, Athens, for instance, we have less, less pollutions. And many people say in Athens, who live, well, I live uh, outside, you remember, we went to this area nearby the sea. But they can see the really blue uh, sky. So, in general, I always say that in everything, we are moving forward always, even with the uh, times of the crises and everything. There is always you can find something which might help us to become better. Thank you so much, Susanna Mekaleidis the Vice Rector of Webster University, Athens, joining us via Skype from Athens on the Webster World Report. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us this week on the Webster World Report. We'd like to add your voices to our program. If you're a student, a staff member, or a member of the faculty, reach out to us. Send us a short audio clip from your cell phone or contact us via email to volunteer to be interviewed on the program. You can find us at covid19 at webster.edu. You can also send questions or comments to that email address if you want to interact about the crisis. That address again is covid19 at webster.edu. Also check out the university's covid19 resource pages at webster.edu slash covid19. You can also hear a report on KWRH-FM. Radio 63119 in Webster Groves, Missouri. The Webster World Report is produced by students, staff, and faculty at Webster University. For news reporter Tiara Gray, associate producer Jennifer Gamich, and announcer engineer Jim Singer, I'm Rick Rockwell. Stay healthy and safe. 
The Webster World Report is produced by the Global Marketing and Communications Division of Webster University and through the facilities and copyright support of Webster School of Communications. This program is copyright 2020.